Hey guys, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Our goal is that each week we're going to send out a video a couple minutes long to talk about our small group ministry and to give you information about the church. As a leader in the church, you need to know some things before we announce them to the congregation. And we also want to give some thoughts and ideas and some equipping uh, training ideas that will help us as we lead our church. Today what I want to talk about just for a few minutes is your role as a shepherd. I don't know how you view yourself as a leader in our small group ministry, but understand this, you're a shepherd to those sheep who God has placed under you in your small group. In fact, I would say this, your small group should be a microcosm of the church and that you need to shepherd that group just like a pastoral staff would shepherd the church. Think about the role of a shepherd. Number one, a shepherd protects their sheep. And, and that really is a part of your role to protect them. And they're going to face all kinds of, of um, competition and reasons why they're not gonna be there and other things. So let me give you a couple ways to protect your sheep. Number one, pray for your sheep because the great shepherd loves them and, and wants the best for them. And, and we have the opportunity to pray for those that God has put under our ministry. Pray for your sheep, encourage your sheep, those who are in your class to, to be faithful to God and to live for him. Secondly, a, a shepherd feeds their sheep. And that's what you do as you teach God's word. Now, I will say this, as you teach, make sure that the teaching isn't just for information's sake, but it's for life transformation. That you're teaching with a goal in mind, that whenever they walk out, people know what to do with what they've just heard. And so as you teach your sheep, as you teach your classes, then next week, ask them maybe when they come in, how'd you do this week on what we talked about last week? Also, a shepherd knows their sheep and they know where their sheep are. Let me ask you, those in your role, do you know where they all are? Are there people in your role you wouldn't even know them if they walked in your class? And so one of the things that we need to understand is that our small group ministry is really where church happens. The, the worship service is the crowd, but church really is a small group ministry. And if there's somebody on your role, you need to know who they are and you need to find ways to reach out to them and minister to them. That being said, here's what I know. We have some small groups that'll have six or eight. We have some small groups that'll have 30 or 40. If you're leading a small group of 30 or 40, first of all, it's really not a small group, it's a small church. But secondly, you can't shepherd 30 or 40 people. And so you're not really a shepherd, you're a rancher. Because a rancher has multiple flocks. And what you need to do is you need to have care group leaders under you that they've got eight to 10 to 12 people each so that you really are doing that Jethro principle where you shepherd those who are care group leaders and they would shepherd those underneath them. Ways to do that, visit them in the hospital if they're sick, follow up if they're absent, let them know you're praying for them, know what's going on in their life. If something great happens, celebrate it that weekend with them and, 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 um, and just really have that feel of they belong and they need to be there each week because you care for them as the shepherd. So I guess more than anything, I'm saying have ownership for your class for the group that God has given you. Have a vision for your class, for your class to grow spiritually, for your class to grow numerically, uh, and for your class to, to grow in their, in their passion for the Lord and ministering to others. Now, I also said that these times will be time of information too. A couple weeks ago, I mentioned both Beulah and the, um, the Brazilian church. Not a lot of information to share on that yet. I met with the Brazilian pastor again today and things are really progressing along. And I think in the next, probably in the next month, we'll be talking about uh, that congregation being a part of our church. And we're really excited about that. But in the weeks ahead, as we do these, we'll give you information and we'll give you updates on both the Brazilian church and Beulah. This weekend, we're having communion. And so if maybe if you have a Facebook page for your group, or maybe if you have an email for your group, you may want to let them know, man, don't miss this weekend. We'll be taking communion together in all of our services. 
I want to thank you for leading uh, so well in our small group ministry. And, and as we close, I just want to pray for you. Father, I thank, for the, thank you for those who have been called to be a part of your work that's to be done here at Windermere. And Lord, I thank you for so many of our groups who minister to so many people. And Lord, we, we really know that that's where church happens. Lord, as we strive to give our best, we pray that we won't take these roles for granted, but that God, we will seek you uh, in all of this and that we will really uh, take our calling seriously. God, we thank you for our church and we thank you for all that you're doing. And we just uh, pray that God, uh, you would continue to empower us uh, to bring people to you to love people and minister to them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.